Blog Talk Radio. It is Sunday, November 19th, 2017, and school is officially in. In. Mm-mm. Is it? I gotta work out them animated versions of us. Word. Doing a biz marquee, John. Well, that was an odd fade. Yeah, yeah. Was it? Yeah, (laughs) Aaron is hilarious. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome to the Schools In Podcast. Once again, once again, it's on. I am Mitch, and I am joined everlastingly by my two illustrious co-hosts. Um, One of them is a little more memory lane. I'm thinking that's more um, Aunt, Aaron's, Aunt's a little more in, um, memory lane, right? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You don't know, I, don't know I think it. okay, and I think I think Aaron is a little bit more one time for your mom. <laughs> Aaron, um, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. It might be the other way mind. around this time. Yeah, I was thinking it. Yeah, I was thinking it. Really? <laughs> How did I get it wrong? Oh no. Yeah, so, Aaron's more nostalgic. Uh, I, you know what? But I don't know. I don't really see Aaron being that nostalgic. Sometimes it seems like he's just more um, traditional. Uh, maybe. I, I don't know if he's. He, I don't know if he's sappy like that. Not really. <laughs> not sappy. Not sappy. Nostalgic. Yeah. yeah. Why nostalgic? Why nostalgic gotta be uh, synonymous with uh, sappy? Because it, cause it generally is. It's like, I oh, guess. let me look back on, you know, those things of old and reminisce and say, look here, Sonny, back in my day. <laughs> yeah, everybody's <laughs> talking about the good old days. Shaking my the good cane. Old <laughs> 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 the good old days. The good old days. Let's talk about them good old days. <laughs> and, and that's when, you know, uh, when my girl... Um, Oh my God! What's her name again? Uh, Gladys Knight comes out and starts singing, "Memory from mm-hmm. the corners of my mind." <laughs> Which RZA sample? Can it be? Can it be? Yep. Can it be? So simple. I wonder how many heads we just went over. How many heads we just went over? Oh, a zillion. I actually own that CD. I actually own that CD too. You know what's no. funny? You know what's funny about that? I was uh I was thinking about how every every generation got like its own uh dialogue on the good old days. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. That's a show mm-hmm. in itself. It you know what it really is. But you know what? Um uh, we have an old head um um young blood show coming up and we'll talk about that on that show when we when we get to it next next year. Next no doubt. year. 20, 2018. Woo, 2018. Uh, we closed, that, we closed that, our first year. Round of applause. That shit. All right. That yeah, shit yeah. hurt to say. Like, like, my chest hurt it when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but if, but in case you did not pick up on the chapters because you did not read them, we were throwing out not, song titles for Nazir's Illmatic, which could only mean that we are taking a trip down memory lane back to the book. This is our second installment now and last installment, God help us, of <laughs> Michael Eric Dyson's I Write Long Ass Books for <laughs> Nazir's <laughs> um, Old to Illmatic called Born to Use Mike. Um, before we get started talking about um, the meat in those chapters, we want to remind you once again to please like us on Facebook and follow yeah. us both on Facebook and Twitter. And our name is spelled correctly. 
S C H O O L S I N schools in. Please also follow us on Blog Talk Radio on um uh, Google Play Music. Uh, yeah, you can do it on Google Play Music, iTunes. You can also do it on Castbox and SoundCloud. And you can do it on SoundCloud. And even if you don't like us and you're hate listening, you can hate follow us on all of those <laughs> platforms as well. We don't give a shit. Just follow post, us and post all of your negative comments and at post Aaron. Them all. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck Aaron's world up like that. <laughs> I'm like, damn, what I say today? <laughs> you can at me too, cause I people, I know people want to fucking come at me. I say some of the wildest shit out of my face, but so you at me all you want. Well, I'm sure the future fans love me. Please, all future <laughs> fans hate us. <laughs> future and Migos fans can't stand our asses. So I don't think but, I don't think people that listen to future uh, listen to podcasts though. Do they? Whoa! The I think I think Aaron just came at y'all neck indirectly. <laughs> I see Aaron in your ways. There's no future in it. Oh. Hey. <laughs> oh, y'all are going gangster today. I'm just, I'm just saying. Aaron just said y'all future fans are too stupid to find your way to a podcast. What's a podcast? That's, oh, <laughs> that's horrible. But it's probably dangerously accurate. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh, I can't. I can't imagine if you are a future fan and you like that type of that you really are soaking up that type of thing that you would be listening to a podcast or would be doing anything intellectual at all. Yeah. They only follow like five minute Instagram videos and shit, or clips of everyday struggle. I mean, five second, five second Instagram videos. That's true. Probably clips of everyday struggle, but not even good clips like you know. The ones Not that like, talk about Migos and XXX Tentacion getting into guy. street fights, getting into street fights and shit. <laughs> so um, let's let's talk about the chapter. And we don't even gotta go in order, but let's just talk about the chapters that stuck out to y'all this time. Well, for me, hands down, chapter six. <laughs> <laughs> hands down. <laughs> Wow, what's up that with was, it? That was the easiest chapter to get through. And that's not that's not to say that it was a, a elementary level chapter or nothing like that. It was still I'm, very I'm, advanced. I'm glad you explained that because you're starting to sound like a future fan. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it, was still, it was still very, very advanced for what it was, you know. Okay. Well, compared to the other chapters, you know. It's a Michael was, Eric Dyson book. Come on, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Need I really say more? Exactly. No, you don't. <laughs> Not really. So what are they talking about in there though? This chapter this chapter related the relationship between uh, kids in the ghetto and their fathers. Hmm. And related that to hip hop music and jazz. Which is a pretty dope relation to make. I think so. I mean it's the it's the same relation, but people don't, because jazz has got, has now been basically associated with elitism. People don't understand what jazz was originally born out of, and it was not elitism. It was pro black folks. True, much like hip hop. Exactly like hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> what I thought I thought was dope. He made a point. He made a point that said the music cover all of those unspoken feelings and thoughts and emotions between father and son. Yeah, that's dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I thinking about that because, like, when I read these chapters, you know, for anybody that, like, listen to Illmatic like we do, um, I think of the songs that, like, inspire these chapters, so when you think about, like, uh, a song like Memory Lane, like, mm-hmm. you notice that, you notice that, uh, Nas is going down the line of like you know like just growing up in the hood and stuff like just you know uh yeah 
speaking on those types of things. And if you notice, like when he speak on these things, like it's not often you hear him talk about his father. True. Which true. is true. He, I don't know, it, it seemed like he started doing that towards, like when he started getting older and he had his own right. kids. I was just going to say, I didn't even realize oh, Oludaro was not his dad until, like just going off the music alone, until after, like, I am Nostradamus, yeah. and it was, it was not, it was written, but uh, what was after Nostradamus? Uh, you, well, first of all, you remember the word uh, Nostradamus. Lord, it was Lord so well, well, like I like well, I like the, the, I, I I keep forgetting that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you talking about Godson? Right. Yeah, I didn't even realize that Oludar was not his <laughs> pops. Really? And I remember that's what that's what got you one day in class to keep let you keep me let me keep my headphones on. Yeah. Because you uh, was yeah, playing Oludar and you was playing Oludar in the room. I was like, ain't that not yep. pop? Yep. <laughs> Your face just lit up. And I was like, yay. <laughs> Somebody fucking actually understood. Because I was, I I had both, um, I had I was, I was our CDs and I was playing some of it in class that day. And I remember that. I remember when I was playing that. You was like, oh, that's Nas Pop. I was like, somebody in here actually knows something about music. What the fuck? Uh-huh, uh-huh. The beginning of a beautiful relationship. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Thank we you, are Oludara. Walking, we are walking down memory lane today. How yeah. ironic. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny as hell. <laughs> um, Aaron, what did you think about memory lane? Um... Uh, it was a it was a good chapter. Um, you know, uh, basically just piggybacking off of everything Anthony said. Um, it's it's unfortunate how like uh, jazz music has like this this old elitist uh, stigma behind it. Yep. And um, it's is weird because I'm wondering now if that's how hip hop is going to be. That's you know what? I worry. But but I worry about that all the time, and I feel like the people who are at the for- forefront of shit like that is us right now. Yeah, I feel like that's how it is <laughs> right now. Doing doing what we're doing, like, oh, you you fucking assholes dragging our lovely shit through the mud. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But the you don't have man. to be white. I mean, you don't have to be white, and you don't have to be elitist. You just need to be halfway intelligent. That's all. I feel like when you say that, people get offended. They do, but I mean, the same thing has happened with rock, too, what, what Aaron is talking mm-hmm. about. Like, it's, it's intellectualizing of shit and then pushing us out of it like we're a bunch of dummies. Stop letting yourself be a dummy. You be an intellectual, too. What's wrong with that? You can all be intellectual on some level. We we all used to be on some level. Yeah. And, but it make me it make me wonder like you know is this you know because obviously I don't think you know a lot of us are old enough to understand like the transition that jazz went through. But do you think it was like that? It, it was the same thing we dealing with now. Whereas though, like you got people that come from the hip hop generation that's that's trying to keep one foot in, one foot out, and saying, "Oh, I understand what the young cats is doing." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To let them do them. Mm-hmm. A lot of the well, older because guys, they yeah. see the changing, that they see things changing too much, and they don't want to get alienated. But I mean, in a way, that can't like you can't do that because you just by virtue of you not being young anymore, right? You're just you're, and and being from the old school. Like it's different if you're somebody like. Two chains, he's two chains, and or like Rick Ross, they're really my, like they really should be in an old school lane because they're too old. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But they, but they popped in a in a newer generation, like just like right. Jay Z did. So Jay Z is not in his generation either. So it's the same kind of thing. It's like unless you're one of those type of people, by by virtue of you being older, like like. <laughs> Somebody um, like younger than you guys is not generally going to be checking for a Big Daddy Kane or a, a Method Man. So I mean, to, you don't have a issue with staying in your own lane. You know what I mean? To, to yeah. illustrate that, to illustrate that on Friday, I seen a tweet 
that said Sai Hada Prince just dropped the hood version of 444. And I'm See? reading it, I'm like, 444 was for the hood, you idiot. <laughs> yep. Like, what does that Let's even see. mean? It's, it's the generational disconnect right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is. As a matter of fact, I was uh, I was looking at a, uh, a tweet that was speaking on that, too. It was from uh, Skills. He said, um, the generation gap in music is simple. We live in the era where drug dealer music... Hold on. He said, we live in the era where um, these kids are making drug, drug user music. Yeah, and that's yeah. Why, and that's like and that's probably like the biggest disconnect. Mm-hmm. I mean, we was all selling it all crazy back in the eighties and the nineties. Somebody had to be buying it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but 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 again, but the people who were again who were doing crack, first of all, the drug was different. Mm-hmm. Like the like the drugs that these kids are talking about are a bunch of hallucinogens every every two seconds. Recipes, little Pete. Yep. Like they're talking about being in a daze most of the time, like yeah. in a in a. It's funny. It's funny, like uh, days. Yeah, it's funny to think about that though, because when you think about um like artists of the past, like you know uh, uh the Jimi Hendrix and the Funkadelics and people like that, they yeah. were doing they were they were doing drugs like that, but it didn't it didn't make the music sound trashy. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like you mm-hmm. know like they had they had some stuff that was in bad taste sometimes, but it wasn't. You know, trash ass music. Mm. Well, Aaron, there's a reason for that. They were musicians who mastered their instruments. <laughs> and I feel like too, they were going <laughs> off the influence they felt from doing those drugs, not so much celebrating the actual. Very act true. Of yep. Very true. Mm. I think they were using uh, those drugs that they tripped off of. They were using them as inspiration to take them. Someplace, and I mean the same thing with a lot of the jazz artists to take it to, to to bring it back to memory lane. The jazz artists were taking a lot of that heroin, and they were, but they weren't on those drugs just to get high. A lot of times they did that because it took them to a place where they created. Right. And it's unfortunate that they got hooked on that that, that shit, but you know, it was a place for them <laughs> to create. It wasn't a place for them to necessarily escape. And that's what this generation is using drugs for. They are yeah. trying to escape their reality. That, that made me think about uh, that made me think about that uh, everyday struggle episode when the Hitmakers was on there. I don't think I saw that one. Well, Joe Button was talking to the guy A One. He was like, "There's no way you sat there and produced 45 songs and there were no drugs involved." <laughs> and then and then Young Berg was like, "A One don't do nothing. He don't even smoke weed." See? You don't do nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's some people they don't like. They they don't they just they don't need that. They just work. Like I don't I don't imagine Stevie Wonder is you know a drug addict. Right. <laughs> I didn't I didn't think that either about Ray Charles until that movie came out. <laughs> well, that that was like I knew Ray Charles was a drug addict. Though. I did. I had no idea. Yeah, I was like, wow. My mom told me that years ago when I was younger. But is that yeah. a sign of the times, or this is definitely a sign of the times? Unfortunately, I don't know. Sure. I think, I think, I think it's exactly what we're saying. It is. It's like it's more so of a, a, a place of escapism, more so than a place to to add on to one's creativity. Because I feel like it's mm-hmm. definitely. It's definitely even rappers. I feel like it's definitely rappers that you know what I'm saying that might draw off of the influence. Like when you listen to um uh uh Royce the five nine death is certain, like he you know what I'm saying, like everybody knows, anybody that's a Royce fan knows that he was dealing with alcoholism around that time. Yeah. So, yeah. He's only what, you know what five years clean now? Right, right, exactly. You know, he put out thought, a lot of work. And yeah, he talks about that. that. He talks about that openly, but like, uh, Death is Certain is like his most critically acclaimed project, and like fans, mm-hmm. fans love it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's but, yeah. it's like, but he was coming more One so than like you know, more so than what artists do nowadays. Whereas though, like they do these drugs, and it's like the drug, and on top of the fact that they don't know what they're doing. We talking about Royce and Royce the Five Nine, who is like you know, 
like he'll tell you himself, like you know, he rap his ass off and he he mastered his craft and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we don't have a lot of artists nowadays that work off of Hard. that. Yeah, that's not working. They're not working at that type of level to to be under the influence and then us feel like, oh well, you know, they they using drugs and the drugs is making the music sound good or whatever the case may be. It's it's not the same thing at all. It's I more give so- them, yeah. I wanna give them the benefit of the doubt and say they haven't gotten there yet. No, I think it's the uh, motivation. He's right, the motivation is clearly different. They're yeah. they're motivated by something. Well, their value system and, and value set is very, very different. It's just not the same anymore. Right, like, the value system. Know, like, yeah. mm-hmm. the, the value system pretty much is just it's just the money. And that's something I wanted to touch on last time in the um in the hip hop is dead um episode uh-huh. because I feel like that's a lot of what's going on with the music now. Even so, with people that we feel it are more talented, like we got mm-hmm. people that because we don't seen the older generation suffer so much with you know uh, not having their money intact. Like you know, we talk about Rock Kim all the time. You know, what I'm and saying? that's How understandable. It's understandable. Yeah. Like like Big yeah. L. Like we all talk about Big L. And we talk about how Cold Crush ain't get their money. Like that. That's been a exactly. long standing thing. Like everybody else talking about how Cold Crush ain't get paid. Right. And how so now, all of our greats didn't get their money, like, like you know. Right. So now it's a lot of the newer artists that's working off of that energy more so, where it's like, okay, we already know we can make the right music. Let's just make it and push out as much as possible and make sure that our money is right. And you can hear that when you listen to the music, that the focus is more so on the business aspect than it is to the art aspect. Well, because I think, and we've touched on this before, even with... The same with jazz. Like, when you think about bebop and this this jazz that was sampled, you know, for memory lane or this type of jazz that was being played during those times. Like, if you draw those parallels between jazz and and um, hip hop, like during the days of say, like um, big bands. You know when it was just starting to get big how much money you think was made during that time and then how much money do you think was made when bebop came through how much money do you think bebop was really pulling and then and like modal jazz compared to when jazz fusion hit and then all these like larger groups started experimenting in jazz fusion like that's where the money was right Right, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at the, the Bebop Moto era as being a like money over everything era. Sorry, not money yeah, over everything. Makes- Excuse me. I'm sorry. I meant to say, um, look at that era as as uh, lyrics over everything. How we all right, talk I get about that. I get what, over yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, like like that was the era when you were at your your zenith for that craft. Where you were, the, where the, all the all the people who were working within that were at their zenith, they had gotten to the pinnacle of where they could take that art form. Mm-hmm. And then you compare that to, again, ironically, to Nazir. Like Nazir is at the peak of where that is, which is the reason why this book even exists in the first place. Right, because right. he, because he's the peak of that. He's at the point. People don't like to to keep saying that. People who are not, I have friends who are Nas haters that call us all Nas fans. But he that's where this is. He's at that juncture right there, where you got to that that point, and you're like, this is as good as this shit gets. And then we just diverged and went off into the fusion direction and people was like fuck this shit I need to get this money as Aaron was talking about yeah like this is not and and because you know money bled off into it like Aaron said it's not it's not going to be viewed or looked at that way anymore it's just it's not so the art to it the, the having books like this having you know like whole books like I mean, what what modern day hip hop album is going to have a whole book dedicated to it? Besides Kendrick, 
take take Kendrick out of the equation. Triple X. <laughs> Triple X ain't even a foot fucking footnote. Most of this shit is not even not even gonna get a footnote in hip hop history. It's gonna be an example of what not to do. Let's hope so. You know, I really, really hope that that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's funny that um, because the the memory lane chapter also does kind of make a like draw some parallels between jazz and hip hop too, because they talk about race music, as mm-hmm. we've talked about before on this show too. I don't know, and that again made me think what we always talk about how what happens with our music all the time it's the same juncture you see yourself at in at every you know at every point in almost all the music that we make you know that that, that people of color make yeah pretty much it's like we get we get raped for it we get left in poverty and then something else is born from it Yep. Yep. Well, you know, we're the uh, trend, the trendsetters. Oh yeah, we are definitely what's cool. And even to us, you know, we we might look at somebody else to try to emulate what they're doing, but we're missing the basics when we do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So, um, <clears throat> so I guess moving away from memory lane and going into one love, that was a loaded chapter. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that, that was, was Mr. Play. Michael Eric. It was. That was Mr. Michael Eric Dyson's, um, very, 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 um, intimate chapter. Yeah, it was personal. Yeah, so what do you guys think about that one? I what think that was one of the, I think that was one of the more the, the better chapters cuz it um it explains everything that we um that we talked about in, you know, uh the episode about prison culture, like when we talked about all of that. Mhm. On top yep. of the fact that like, you know, he got his own personal he got his own personal relationship with that his brother. Right. Mm-hmm. Which I think is always important too. Like I, I feel like you know we talk about like stuff being out of context a lot of times. It's important that you know somebody that's actually lived through what's being said on these records is explaining yeah. it in the way that in the way that they do. It's like you know I understood where he was coming from because this is this is what I was going through in my life at that point in time. You know. And I think a lot of our black males because that's who largely this was originally, you know, hip-hop was targeted at. True. It can definitely relate to this. But on the positive side of that, too, it painted a picture for people who don't necessarily understand. True. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what it did. And I, um, and I thought about that, uh, that, what's that, the Criminal Minds episode, Anthony? Which one? Oh, well, one was uh, Spencer said anybody who can't quote Illmatic is just ignorant. Yeah, like I thought. <laughs> yeah, I think about. I think. Yeah, I, I think about that. Like uh, when you say that, because you know that's exactly that's exactly what, and not just Illmatic, but hip hop in general. Like that's okay. that's kind of what is that's kind of what is made for it too, for people for outsiders to be able to look in and say, well, this really, yeah, you know I'm saying this is this is what's going on in a, in a world that we're not really able to identify with. You know what I'm saying? True. Yeah, I Shout like this chapter too because it, well, this and and this chapter too, if I can remember, if I focus and remember, um, it kind of brought me back to thirteenth a little bit. Mhm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By Ever Duvernay. Yeah, because it's, it was talking about the, the justice system in this country too. Like Michael Eric Dyson was, you know, really breaking down. The injustice in our in our country and in our communities with being incarcerated. Period. Those stats alone, and this book is pretty dated. Those stats alone were disturbing enough. Yeah. 
Yep. And this book, what year did this book come out? Uh, what was it, 2008? Was it that 2008? Was the most stat, that was at least the most recent stat he had listed was 2008. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's gotten ridiculously, outrageously mm. worse. And, and that's, yeah, and, and how many years is that now? About eight. Eight. Going on nine. Yeah. About eight or nine years now. So... Yeah, it's really, um, this chapter was kind of rough and, and hit home, probably in all the wrong places for hip hop listeners. Yeah. Right. And, and you know what? I think it's important that, you know what I'm saying? Like people like, you know, I mean, we urge people to read on this show and a lot of people should, because a lot of times, especially in the black community, we just, we dismiss this type of stuff as, oh, that's just normal. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, you know. I got cousins mm-hmm. that go to jail, go to jail all the time. I got brothers that go to, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got family that go in and out of jail all the time, not realizing like the effect that it takes on them. Mm-hmm. And that's very true, and that's a really big deal because, like, I remember even when I was teaching y'all, like, especially you know the environment that you guys went to school in, like, it was nothing for for my students to have PO. Mm-hmm. And I would just be like, eh, uh, uh, you know, very, very disheartened by this, you know, kind of thing. And most of the kids are like, you know, that's that's life. People go to jail. Yeah, like, pretty much. Like some people don't know anybody who goes to jail. Yeah, that's not normal in the suburbs. It's not normal <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> just, just randomly sitting next to a dude who has a PO in your classroom it's not what happens everywhere nah. like th- there was a kid in my classroom that I kicked out and I'm not even going into it but like he was in the back of my classroom talk, talk, trying to teach this other kid how to cook crack <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah <laughs> And, and of course there was there was no Migos, you know, instructions, you know, for for your crock pot back in the day during that time. So <laughs> he was just, you know, he he's like he said, Well first the, you know, you get the bacon soda. I was like, Does he think I don't know what cooking crack sounds like? <laughs> they were they were talking about pound cake. They were talking about pound cake. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's hilarious. They had big. They had Biggie playing in the background. Yo. <laughs> First, <laughs> right? Don't get high. <laughs> on your own that supply. One. That one. That one. Well, that one there is something this kids and this, gen- uh, this generation need to listen to because apparently they don't understand. Don't get high on your own supply. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See that's see that's how you know it's a big disconnect. They ain't heard the Ten Crack Commandments, ain't that some shit? Yo, mm, that's it's a it's a mess. But yeah, it is yeah a mess. like that that's like you just said that's um like you both said that's not normalcy. It should not no, be normal for us. It's not. It's not normal. It's funny. It's funny. Like what you don't even realize how you per, what you perceive is normal. Like we were talking the other day. Like how now I live in West Virginia and like it's it's you know behaviors and and stuff that like is weird to me when I see people and interact with people down here and it's like you know people have pointed out people have pointed out to me like you know like they obviously know I'm not from down here like how you walk about speaking why are you speaking to everybody why are you greeting everybody <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like that's strange stop it. <laughs> One other bad thing, unfortunately, that this chapter kind of touches on too is um, is the outlook that hip hop has on incarceration. Because we're just talking about the normalcy. It's how we post up jail and jail time as not just being normal, but being desirable because it 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 helps to credit you in hip hop. Unfortunately, yeah, he's saying it's a rite of passage now. Yep, 
Like, yeah. and it was it was not like that in the very. I mean, not saying people didn't go to jail; they did. But in the golden era, and like just before, in the old school era, in the golden era, like going to jail was not a was not considered something you posted up and told everybody. Yeah, I've been in jail until you know gangster rap came along. But before that, that that wasn't a rite of passage. Yeah, it really wasn't. Like, who? Uh, what's the um. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Philly rapper, Cool C, right? Oh Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like be like um. I remember like you know, uh, uh, talking to like old heads about like you know him or whatever, and like you know when he was out, and like you know yeah people listen to him or whatever, but it seemed like as as after he went to jail or whatever, like nobody really like glorified the fact that he went to jail. You get what I'm saying? No, like not, we were so actually. Well, no, people were condemning because he, Cool C and Steady B, they when they robbed that bank, they killed that woman, they killed that cop. Right. But people more, more weren't like, oh yeah, great. Well, yeah, I've seen because articles about it more recently. Because people, social mores have changed now, Anthony. They have a different mm-hmm. outlook on it than our generation did. Like we didn't post that up; it was not good. We were ashamed right. of that. That was like, you know, that was like Africa Bambada status at the time. It was like something to be ashamed of and to distance yourself from in hip hop. Right. Yeah. But it's, see, but that's, that, I get exactly what you're saying because like somebody from my generation would look back, find Cool C and be like, well, that's, that's, that's validity on how, how real the city of Philadelphia is. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. That just valid. Yep. That just, that just validates, you know, how, you know, our rappers, our rappers from Philly always kept it real. No, and, and see, once again, what we always talk about on this show is people look back on things and they remove the context. Mm-hmm. And they don't have any context. Like, th- this chapter outlines the tragedies, you know, of of incarceration, the the um, the injustice of our community, but it also points out the negatives of us making those things positive. That's you know, it's not. <laughs> we have to stop that. Yeah, yeah. That. but. <clears throat> And I think I, I think I probably talked about this before. Um, we gotta we gotta understand that a lot of that stuff was marketed to the younger generation of hip hop, like you know True. people people me and Anthony's age. Like so when we come up, you know what I'm saying? Like people we was looking at was like the DMXs and people like that who promoted that that prison culture and all of that type of oh, stuff. Oh yeah. And not not realizing at the time, you know what I'm saying, we was young. So like not realizing at the time that that's what we taking in. This is the imagery and the the narrative that we taking in of what hip hop is supposed to be about. And you know what's so funny about that? That you should say that, Aaron. That most people don't even know this, and people, you know, even your age that love DMX, because as you all say, DMX, you know, half raised y'all. But DMX and K Solo were in jail together. Mm-hmm. Most folks on this show who, who, who would hear this and are young don't even know who K Solo is. Number one, <laughs> right? <laughs> number number two, when K K Solo came out, I never knew K Solo had been in jail. Almost none uh-huh. of us K Solo had been in jail. You know why? Because nobody was walking around in general proud of that shit so you didn't have a lot of people like yeah I was in jail right it wasn't it wasn't anything to brag about I didn't learn until years later when I watched beef yep that's not me on that (laughs) that case solo and DMX were in jail together Yep, that's how I found out how old DMX was. I'm like, DMX been rapping longer than I thought. He was talking about yeah. beefing with beefing with K Solo over that old ass song. That yeah. nigga was four, he was forty when he came out. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that, that's my point. It's like Aaron is right. You know, like 
by the time DMX came up, like the tides had turned. Yeah, like, right. you know, so many, like, you know, being in jail was a rite of passage. You know, selling drugs was a rite of passage. Well, I mean, yeah. it makes sense. It makes sense when you think about it the way Michael Eric Dyson put it. When the music is based on communities that are more likely to be locked up than is and yep. expected and I was for just it to start to reflect that. that. Yep. Yep. Because, I, you know, as we always say, art imitates life, imitates art, imitates life. And so because that music was was in our communities predominantly, it's going to start reflecting what we're doing. Yeah, but I mean, it's just it's just scary how we react to it. You know what I'm saying? And this and this goes back to what I was talking about before, like us reacting to hip hop. Like we, the way the way we react to like the whole gel thing. Like look at Meek Mill right now. Everybody is like, it's like yeah. this is what we, this is this is what we react to in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like the the messages that we get from people that's like you know promoting otherwise to us. We're not reacting to that aspect of it. It's like, this is what we, like, Michael Eric Dyson in here, he's talking about, he's talking about, like, how when people like Tupac, people like Beanie Siegel, people like Lil' Kim, as soon as they came out of jail, their record sales went up. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And it's, it's, yep. it's crazy. <laughs> like, that's, all that's of, crazy. All, but, but everybody is like that now. They go to jail, they come up like Remy Ma. Her career is mm-hmm. surging now since she kind of came out of jail. Mhm. And everybody's like, like reversing that shit. Like, yeah, Papoose is the shit because he held her down while she. I'm like, the fuck. Right. <laughs> that shit is crazy. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> Are we still on this holding motherfuckers down while they in jail? Shit. Apparently so. Apparently so. But um, so that's um, that's first period. I just got a good idea. I just got a really good idea, Ant. Okay. Like, a really good idea. So, so we're going to do another show about this when we get all our stats together, you know, later on down the line. But I think we should put all these free meat meal motherfuckers out to lunch right now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking <right>. of jail, <laughs> that works. That was a that was a good segue and tie in, Aaron. Speaking of jail, that, that works. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? See, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a beef with them if our voter turnout stats wasn't the way they was. Like, PA just had an election. Them. I wouldn't have beef with them. If every single last black or brown person that was wrongly convicted or or unjustly um, convicted had been marched for, if y'all mm-hmm. were in the street marching around for everybody, then okay. But y'all don't like. You don't give a shit about everybody it happens to. You give a shit about Meek Mill because cause he entertains you and makes you dance around like a little drunken puppet. Yeah. yeah. We we worship celebrities in this day and age. That's a, And money. That's the problem. Yep. That's it. But according to what I hear, he's doing stuff for the community. I don't know exactly what he's doing. Oh, come on, man. No. Well, he's been... They say he's been giving to charity and whatnot. All this other so, stuff. So has your mom. So, <laughs> <laughs> but still, you know, my thing, my thing is like, you had so many people out there marching for me, not long after the election, and we only had twelve percent voter turnout, and that's registered voters. And I'm sitting there <laughs> thinking, I'm like, how many people in that crowd were actually registered voters, and how many of those registered <laughs> voters went out to vote? I'm gonna give you a strong guess Probably none. <laughs> 0.1% is what I'm going here. And this is the election to go out and vote. This is for the Supreme Court. This is for DA. 
Yeah. Yeah. Very important election. You want to affect change where you can on the local level. This was the one to do. For you. Yeah, that was the one for you to do it. But you want to be marching around for me to mail that up. And, and from what I understand, from what I read, I don't live in Philly anymore. Only Aunt lives in Philly now. Yeah. Aaron and I both live Lucky in different me. states. But Lucky me. I heard, I heard, I heard in Philly that, like, Philly was the, the streets were almost crowded and half shut down. Mm hmm. Traffic was be like, man, get F O H, man. It was basically, uh, what's that concert they have? Philly has. Every year, Power oh, 99. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was basically mm-hmm. that. Oh, part power, it was Powerhouse. It was Powerhouse. <laughs> oh, jeez. Rick Ross showed yeah. up a couple Seriously? of Seriously? Two years yeah. ago, his, uh, you you fucking couldn't spell L without Meek Mill. Still can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking understand this shit. And I, look. They say if they Meek was at the window like uh, Mr. Clark and shit. I can't. I've seen that. I've seen that. I saw that. <laughs> Looking out with his megaphone, like, <laughs> Uh huh. This is crazy. Our priorities are messed up. Just completely jacked. Y'all seen completely that Just Hilarious jacked. video I sent? Yeah. That shit was funny, yeah. <laughs> I mean,. We can still put Michael, I re- Eric, I write long ass books, Dyson out to um, lunch too. But like y'all, Meek Mill marchers and and sympathizers, I need y'all to go read a book or two or fifty and and challenge the entire justice system. I'm not I'm not saying that that judge might not be you know excessive. Like, we all agree that we think that the punishment might be excessive. But maybe not, depending on what Meek really did. But from uh, our understanding of it, Meek Mill just kept giving motherfuckers his ass to kiss every two seconds. Like, we have to stop, stop, stop not holding ourselves accountable for our fucking actions. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. But and when I agree Bill Cosby said that... that too, when Bill Cosby said that he got crucified. But wait, anytime any of us says it's, that we get crucified. It's not it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And the way in the way Bill Cosby said it, and I know a lot of people are gonna look at me like, Well, wasn't you standing for him? But the way he said it was more so in a condescending type of way. Where like he should didn't, be? It should mm, be. I don't I don't I don't necessarily you know agree with the way I don't, I don't agree with the way that Bill, that Bill went about time. it. But that, remember, I think I talked to y'all about this. When that shit happened, I was teaching y'all at the time. Mm. And I think I asked y'all what y'all thought about that. I agree. I did too. I I don't give a shit how we say it. I don't give a shit if, if, you know, Bill Cosby is a massive rapist now or if he isn't. We all know. Allegedly. Allegedly. However, he wasn't wrong about that. Like he he basically said, like we used to be in the hood, but the, but the hood wasn't in us. Well, that mm. shit is completely flipped. It's one and the same. Y'all hood motherfuckers are fucking out of order. You destroyed us and you destroyed our communities. We are on our fucking last legs in those communities. It's just that, but unfortunately, that shit bleeds off into the good areas of our because there's only a small percentage of our communities that are like that about maybe 25 percent of our communities are 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 in poverty but two thirds of I, our communities aren't but i feel like i feel like somebody like michael eric dyson who's a little bit more in tune with this with with the generation that he's talking to mm-hmm. he could have said the same thing and we would have took to it completely differently they actually they actually condemned bill cosby in that chapter yeah, they did, but um, I still don't think what he's saying is wrong. I mean, what Aaron is saying might be true, 
that the way you say it, people don't like it. But sometimes this, that's like saying, oh, I don't, I think what, what this fact is is wrong because I don't like you. I have people give me facts all day long. I might not like you, but you ain't lying. Yeah. And how often does somebody tell you something negative about yourself? Or are you supposed to like what they say? Generally, no. Generally not, no. Nah. <laughs> and 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 you guys generation can't separate you know like because of all of that hate and hater shit you can't Please separate construction the constructive criticism you know from hate so anytime anyone criticizes anything you do even if it's for the betterment or the enrichment of you it doesn't even matter you're just labeled a hater and the person just moves on. Says, fuck you. You know? Yeah. Unfortunately. Nah, it, I get that part of it, too. So, yeah. I mean, I need y'all Meek Mill supporters to to watch Ava DuVernay's 13th and go read the fucking... Go fucking read your... See, the first book you start with when you read those 50 fucking books is the new Jim Crow. Okay? That might be a big first step for some people. So, so why are you talking all this Meek Mill incarcerated wrongly <laughs> shit? I need you to have a correct jumping off point. And we've reviewed that book on this show. First, go back and subscribe to this podcast. Then go listen to our show <laughs> on, on the new Jim Crow and 13th. <laughs> okay? And then read those two books or read that book and watch that documentary. And then don't look like a fucking idiot. Okay? But just walking around just saying free Meek Mill, I need you to go free your mind so your ass can follow. Okay. Let's, let's have them. <laughs> let's have them keep that same energy too. Let's have them keep that same energy. That's a popular phrase these days. Yeah, keep, keep that, that same, same energy world, when yeah. it's time to go out and vote. Keep that same energy when uh, with the NFL boycott. Keep that same energy. That exactly. Is the I updated think. Version of free your mind so your ass will follow. <laughs> yes. Shout out to George Clinton. <laughs> Shout out to George Clinton and all the and all the problems in fucking Delaware. <laughs> No, nah, I feel. Like, Sorry, Aaron. No, nah, I feel the same way. I feel the same way Anthony feels. Like you know, you know, I, I, I dig, I, I dig the movement, but I don't understand the motivation. And I, and I agree. Like I want to, I want y'all to have the same energy about everything else. You know what I'm saying? That's going on in our communities. You know, don't just stand up because your favorite, quote unquote, rapper is like you know. Uh, going down for something you feel. <laughs> right. Something you feel is. He's not a quote unquote but, rapper. But, he's a rapper. But, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but 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 last year he was your favorite person to give L's to. This is why Our I don't favorite get punching it. bag. I feel yeah. Like, I got to get it. Like under every yeah. comment. That he was vaguely responsible for. You can't spell L without Meek. <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah, that's the craziness yep. of it. And like you know, like and I think I talked about this like plenty of times. Like all the schools in Philly is being are being closed down right in right in our faces. Like nobody's mm-hmm. trying to stop that from happening. Nobody. Oh, yep. you know, when it was time to vote on that, we had no turnout. Right. Well, I mean, these same folks, they got free meat, um, meat meal signs. They got free meat meal t-shirts. I wouldn't be surprised if you got some tattoos out there. Yo, man. I just hope he get out and do all these things that y'all not willing to do. That's all I hope. Like, no, well, you know what? He, if Don't hold your breath. As you just said, if he's such a political activist now and, and a community organizer, I'm going to need him to use his newfound power to galvanize those people to do what Anthony just said. 
keep that same wow. energy, i.e., free your mind so your ass can follow and and you <laughs> can use that 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 synergy that you're creating for something positive and rather than just you being a fucking groupie. Right. <laughs> That's all it is. Okay, you a fake, a phony, a stain. Okay, wrong song. <laughs> <laughs> Still whoop your ass. So, <laughs> you tie <Tybo>, ho. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like if anything, if I was if I was in his position, I would just feel obligated now. You know what I'm saying? To to sure, at least try to should. get something. At least Do you try think to get that that's going done. to be the truth, though, Aaron? I mean, personally, no, but you know, I would, I would, I would feel good if, well, if I saw that. That's amongst people like us with common sense Speaking on a worldly truth. scale. On a worldly scale, these people that are out there marching for him have common sense on a hood scale, right? So they're gonna be looking yes, for him to yeah, right. carry on hood traditions and. You know, yeah, I feel like these same folks yeah. that are marching around in their boots for Meek Mill are the same people who used to listen to um to uh Pop Perks and and listen to Beanie right. Siegel. So all he gotta do is mm-hmm. all, basically <laughs> basically what you're saying is all he gotta do is throw a free concert and they'll be all good with. It. Yeah, probably. They'll be you got some turkeys in in the hood on some Nino Brown shit. Oh, not not uh, Nino uh, Brown. Please not the Nino yo. Brown. <laughs> See, yeah, all I funny. all I think when you say that is him grabbing a girl and using her as a human shield. Oh my goodness! Yep. How about that? How about that? Like that's what I really think of, not Erky. Oh, oh, oh no! Want to shoot him so bad, my dick's hot. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only like seriously, like when I think Philly, unfortunately, when I think this shit, this. Free this one, free that one. So all I think of is like Beanie Siegel. I don't do much playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like popping up out of the trash and popping your ass. That's what I think about when I think about Philly shit. Oh my goodness. Philly rapper. And 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 that same. But Meek has that same energy. He has that same energy like that. I don't, he don't do much. <laughs> yeah, it's like just pop willies, just pop willies. You know, and and you won't do shit. Yep, that same nigga from Bird Street with yep. the nappy braids that lock. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Philly, we don't hate you. We don't hate you, Philly. We just want y'all to do better. Look. They these two come from Philly. I lived in Philly for ten fucking years. Like Philly is close to my heart. Do fucking better, Philly. Do I wanted better. to say too. I wanted to say too when all this started that I hope this is the first step in Philly musically taking a step toward what Atlanta is doing and how they promote. And you mean no stuff. peanut butter rock? No peanut butter rock. No peanut butter rock. I mean, as far as <laughs> but that's Aaron's I mean, favorite. That's Aaron's <laughs> top five. Peanut butter rock, peanut butter rock, <laughs> peanut butter rock, meat mill and peanut butter rock. <laughs> Notice but how see, Aaron hoping, is not laughing and not amused he's, over there. He's busy shaking his head. <laughs> but that always been a big problem with Philly. Like Philly don't rep, don't respect or represent or uplift Philly. I was hoping this would be like the first step in that. Uh huh. If anything. Mhm. But I doubt it. I I guess we'll see. I suppose. I doubt um, it. And before we, you know, lest we forget you, Michael. Michael, who I met. Michael, who said he was coming on the show. Michael, who did not <laughs> answer text. Michael, who did not make it to our 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 second half to do born to use Mike. Michael, Eric, I write long ass books, Dyson. We're gonna have to have a part three just because. Answer your phone. <laughs> he's too busy he's too busy coming up with a uh, an eloquent second. response a voicemail no, message he's trying to figure out how he's gonna do a second um do a a, a sequel a second book he's doing one for life is good <laughs> right he's gonna do life is good 
Yo, life is good deserves it and shit. It definitely does. Oh, Aaron's definitely having does. some uh some technical issues, y'all. He'll be back in a second. He he restarted this shit. He's gonna be back with us in a minute. So that that peanut butter rock made his computer crash. I think so. Like <laughs> y'all don't understand how badly Aaron hates peanut butter B and B rock. <laughs> he can't stand this shit. I never even knew people called them that until Aaron started calling them peanut butter. I think we're the only ones now. Well, Aaron started that shit. Fucking peanut yeah. butter rock. Ain't that what it stands for? I don't think it does, but because he's B and B, he he just call he calls them peanut butter. I can't and every help but think of those. What's those um those caramel type cookies with the peanuts in it? You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know what you mean. I can't help, I can't help but think of those when you say that. <laughs> Every time I see that shit now, all I think peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time. People are jelly with a baseball bat, like over and over. Uh, that shit makes PNB. more sense than PNB. Really. PNB or or French Montana. Oh, neither. <laughs> Do I have to pick one of those? If you get, you gotta pick one. You got a gun to your head. You gotta pick Wait a one. minute. What am I picking them for? Am I picking them to listen to? Do I have to do some installations with one of them? What? what? <laughs> you, have to, <laughs> you have to listen to one. Dun dun dun. <laughs> oh, where's my button? Oh. Let's see. Oh. Um. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Think real hard. Think real hard. I, you know what? Here's my issue with with French Montana. He's so fucking nondescript. French I Montana is possibly the worst person. One song of his. He's possibly the worst person to have a recording contract. <laughs> the last place in the world he belongs is a recording booth. Where do you think he belongs? On the street corner. <laughs> that is harsh. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah. I would put on DJ Khaled and suffer through DJ Khaled's posting up his baby rather than listen to French Montana. Oh, I'll take a side any day of the week over French Montana. <laughs> Yo, throw on it's some. Been, I mean, at least Khaled will get you pumped up a little bit. At least there's like interesting beats. But Khaled and French run together a lot. Ironically, no, the French is so nondescript. I don't understand what he's doing here. I don't like. I don't get. He, like he might as well just be wallpaper. And I just recently learned he was from Africa. Yeah, he is. I guess that's something to go from Africa to America. And no, make it well, big. whatever. Akon <laughs> is more memorable. Bring him back in here. <laughs> <laughs> is PMB I, Rock the Michael Blackson of the rap game? I mean, first of all, the Michael Blackson of the rap game. I actually think Michael Blackson is more entertaining. <laughs> he definitely is. <laughs> like, literally, the like, French Montana is, like, worse than watching white paint dry on walls. Just white paint, like yellow paint, would be better. <laughs> I'm saying white paint is is, is fucking boring and not good. <laughs> and I can't think of anything more boring than watching it dry. <laughs> then, like French Montana is is worse. I might have to agree with that. I mean, at least if you're gonna sit in a room with the white paint dry, you can get high. <laughs> <laughs> the huff in the fumes, <laughs> taking the fumes. Pretty much. There's no like, fumes with French Montana. He doesn't stir me to do anything but get up and turn the radio off. How about that? I don't, I don't get it. It's pretty accurate. <laughs> and people listen to him and they tell me that they know his songs. And I'm like, oh, okay. Nah. I, I, I wouldn't even call him a feature artist. He's just taking up space. Yeah, he's like, um... Let's see. What is he? I'm trying. Like, if he were a piece of furniture, I'm mm. trying to think what he would be. Something useless. Like, yeah, like not even a lamp. 
<laughs> Not even the lamp I, I shade. Mean, well, yeah, <laughs> but those things are integral to you getting light and in in, in light being diffused properly. Like, no, he he would definitely be something very useless. Like, he'd be like one of those stupid knickknacks that sit there that you have to dust. That's not very attractive. Mm. I got one of those things in my dining room. I have no idea what it is. It's just sitting there taking up space. I don't even know what, what is it. Is. I couldn't tell you. It's like a decade. What's it look piece. like? It's white. It's about yay high. <laughs> when I say yay, I got my hand up to chest level. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it got a cord to it, but when you plug it in, it don't do nothing. I have no idea what it is. Wait a minute. When you plug it in, it doesn't do anything? I, 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 don't, I don't know what it's supposed to do. I don't know what to look for. <laughs> That's exactly like French Montana. <laughs> you, look at it and go, you, you look at it and say, what do you do? Hmm. I wonder. What is your purpose here? Like, as much as I don't like some other artists, like maybe like Pitbull. I've never been a big mm. fan of Pitbull. But I understand what Pitbull is for. Pitbull is the reggaeton. Pitbull is gonna get your fucking party started. Pitbull <laughs> and you jump up and down in the same spot over and over and over again. And repeat the same words in Spanish that you don't understand. Yeah, exactly. But that shit is hype. And and, and if you happen to be at a party, and you're thinking, it's like the same thing that you need the black eyed peas for. Oh God. You know, oh, like, gosh. I mean, look, when you're drunk and you're karaoke, I got a feeling it's not that bad. <laughs> I haven't but, seen any it's like, French it's Montana at karaoke. That's my point. Like, what what are you doing to a French Montana song? Listening to the beat? Uh, really? Are you? I wouldn't know. I've never listened to it. Well, I have, I mean, unfortunately. Even, even the beats are mad. Like, even now that sounds mad but next to <laughs> there's a DJ Khaled Nas and French Montana song that's just horrible wait, oh wait a minute I think I know what song you're talking about Aaron we're talking about French Montana being a a, a, a useless fixture of hip hop <laughs> oh wow <laughs> <laughs> I was you know what's funny I was thinking I was thinking that about him when he was in that uh, whole debate with uh, between Vic Staples and Pete Rock and Raekwon uh, and all of them. I was I was okay, watching. Okay, I'm that. sorry. Those names don't go together. Vic <laughs> Staples <laughs> and French Montana and then Pete Rock and Raekwon. Right, right, right. Uh, sorry, but the whole conversation was the whole conversation was basically on how you know. Uh, Oh, uh, the old, the old hip hop generation versus the younger gen- hip hop generation. I remember that. That, that was the one that Angie, Angie was commentating that. Remember? We yeah, watched right, it. right. Yeah. And, and, um, and I was Staples was way too cocky and full of himself and saying things that made me want to vent Staples slap him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I was watching I was watching French Montana and that whole thing, and they was talking about like how he he the bridge between both like the old and the new because he resonated with the with the French Montana. What? Wow. I mean, yeah, right, Pretty exactly. Much. That's how I, that's how Pretty I felt much. too. But like, it's a lot of it's a lot of older kids that we got respect for that kind of. <laughs> That kind of that kind of do like rock with him. I guess it's on a personal level more so than a music level, though. If you if you get what I'm saying, I guess so because we have determined that there is nothing we understand that he does in hip hop but dry like white paint on walls. There is nothing. <laughs> or there bad. is nothing about him that stands out or is special at all. So so you don't think that he's all the way up. He is mad. He is mad like a motherfucker. Mad. Mad. I mean, I, look, all the way up, but that's Khaled, though. Khaled's what's making that shit sell. True. That's this what's true. causing that shit to be hype. Like, 
take take Khaled, take him and Khaled away from each other, and then tell me a song that you just love by French fucking Montana. By himself? Does he even have songs by himself? I think we're getting ready to make an Aaron feature argument right now. <laughs> For all those who don't know, Aaron has like a lot of theories, and one of his theories is that some rappers and MCs are only only do well on features. They're feature rappers. Yeah, some a lot of them do. A lot of them are only good for that. Even some of our favorite MCs, like like A Z. Mm. Yep. Yep. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna touch that because the old heads will come after me. Yes, they will. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not mad at that. A Z, get your feature on. You know, I love, you know, I love AZ is. though. I love AZ. You have a, you have a buy like a, great. You ever buy like a Lego set? Yeah. You buy a Lego set and you get that one brick that's like painted silver or gold that don't match none yeah. of the other bricks. Yeah. And there's nothing special. There's nothing yeah. special about it other than the color. Yeah. That's French Montana. <laughs> He's that <laughs> unnecessary layer of gold plating on that one Lego brick out of the 2000s. See, I feel what? like he's a clear Lego. <laughs> you can at least use that as a window. If I got a whole set, if I'm building the Death Star or the Millennium Falcon, why do I need a gold plated Lego brick? Yeah. But French Martin is completely different than my whole feature rapper argument, though, because, like, it's a song out right now that's supposed to be his song. But I mm-hmm. would, I never, I didn't even know it was his supposed to be his song until I heard the radio announcer say, you know, by French Montana. Like that's how that's how crazy it was. I was just like, that is wow. exactly. There is nothing about him that would make you like. Even though I hate, hate, hate his music, when I hear Future come on, I know that's who it is. Mm-hmm. He is not distinct. He is nondescript as fuck. <laughs> like seriously, that like that that's the worst thing to me you can be. But people, other people like that shit, and they can they they hear French Montana and they know it's him. I'm like, how the fuck do you? But but if you played a fucking Stevie Wonder song for them, they wouldn't know that shit from a hole in the wall. The fuck is wrong nope. with you? Like I don't understand people's hearing anymore. I don't understand what people listen to anymore. I just I don't get that they don't have. It's like their ears have been damaged, and now all they understand and can register is trash. Is it his voice? His voice is not descriptive, fuck. I agree, but who said it's mostly the voice? I don't. But I didn't even know that was him. Like I don't. I I, I listen to enough of French Martina to recognize his voice when I hear. It. I'm sorry to hear Thank that. You. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that must be that must be both maddening and very very disturbing for you. See, but I listen I listen to stuff I listen to stuff a lot of times for research purposes, and so you know why we, we listen do. to stuff. We so it's not you know it's not you know more so to be entertained by that's probably why i don't even get into a lot of the people like that like a lot of times we would consider like top notch like i don't really i listen to them differently i don't really listen to them and say oh that was you know i really enjoyed that I'm, it's more yeah. so like okay you know like i'm i'm more subscribe I'm, I'm to, to our it show we put on our hip waiters and we wade through the shit for you my mm-hmm. dude mm-hmm. do you want to say what like Aaron is, no- idea they don't aaron and i and anthony has not joined us yet aaron and i literally took a few years off of our lives listening to asap mob volume two <laughs> oh, man. yeah i might have to take y'all word on that <laughs> okay when i was done i was sure i was dead I had Floating to have above, looking down at I your body. To have, I, would look, I, I had to have someone come along and advise me that I was in fact wandering up and down the hallway. Yeah. <laughs> like you can see you can see me. You can see me? I thought I was invisible. <laughs> All right, back. Wrong button. Sorry. Mm, mm, mm. That was a long tangent. 
but it's okay. <laughs> so we've had um, her. That's very true. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, our next couple of chapters, we'll try to we'll kind of keep those a little bit shortened up here because we because our our time is limited now, but um. So we're coming off of One Love, which I think was probably the, I think that everybody would agree that that was one of the strongest, like one of the strongest chapters. Did anybody re-represent again? Is that the next chapter? I, I didn't go off yeah. chapter names. I just kind of read through them. Re- represent. I read that one. Yeah. Represent. Yeah. I didn't get to it. It, um, it ain't hard to tell again be reading that one but yeah well what i got from represent um because i didn't i didn't read that one as far as like you know when i recap <clears throat> when i recap the book mm-hmm. um but what i remember from it was like um the author explaining how represent was meant to symbolize how you know regardless of all the you know the, the the poverty and the strife that we go through in the hood is still something to be celebrated here. Like is that kind of it was that kind of energy, you know, that um was resonating from that uh from that song. Yeah, yeah. What about one time for your mind backing up? That's one of my favorite songs on Illmatic, actually. Like I really yeah, you know love that song. Yeah, that's 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 what I got. I got as far as one time for your mind. I didn't get to represent. One time for it's your funny. mind is like one of my favorite nine songs. I like I that's, really understand that song in a way. That's funny because I don't. I never hear a lot of people say that about one time for your mind. I love that because he's literally. So every song is just really, 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 really deep, and I think well, the chapter know. kind of touched on it too. I think they kind of talked about it. It's like every chapter go so deep about you know him just his everyday struggles living in the Queen's Bridge projects you know we talked about Cointel Pro before um, Mm -hmm. on the show like how deep this shit gets one time for your mind is it's just not sitting shooting the shit having a rare moment of enjoyment where he's at you know, and it, it tied in nicely with the rest of the project. Yeah, yeah, it ties in nicely. But I never hear like anybody that's a fan of Illmatic that I've ever spoken to. I never hear them say like, you know, I one time for your mind is the, you know, like that's that's the go to song right there. I'm not saying it's the go to. I just I really love that song. Mm. Like I never even heard. It. I love it. Yeah, right. I never even heard anybody say like, you know, that's a that's a favorite. You know what I'm saying? Like it's definitely one like if it comes on, it's like you don't skip it. It's just you know it's there. <laughs> like, right. That but, was my first impression of it at least. What and that it's just there. You know I didn't skip it or nothing like that, but it was just there. And see, I think that maybe when we when I was young, I might have thought that, but now when I hear it, I feel like it's almost like you know what. It's like a breath. It's like it's like taking a breath. Mm-hmm. It's like all this deep shit swirling in every other song. Like, you know, he comes in, he's telling you where, you know, like the depths and how deep this shit goes on New York State of Mind. Right. You know, he's right. fucking. He's telling you how horrible life is and life's a bitch. He's, you know, he's he's, he's telling you 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 can try to. You know, elevate up past that shit, and you know the world is yours. But you know, in you know, when love, half time, like that shit gets thick as fuck. You know what I mean? And then one time, he steps back from that, and you get to just take a. Exhale a bit and go. Right now, I'm just gonna sit right here 
on this, you know, park bench with my dude, smoke this L, <laughs> <laughs> and just shoot the shit with him. Like, I, now when I hear that song, you know what I connect to? That, the part in Belly, when Nas is talking to that kid, that's not really yeah, a kid. Good. It's not. Well, that scene, that scene was taken from uh, the One Love video, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. That, that's not really a kid. I thought that was a young boy. I mean, you know what but I you mean. But you know, but you know that make that make perfect sense. Like when you think about it, because like you know, like we just got done saying, like uh, uh, One Love is a pretty deep song. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Especially, especially if you dig into it the way Michael Eric Dyson does, it's like um. You know, even the part where he talk about like not not being too sure about this whole religion thing. It's like you know, uh, what do you say on what do you say at the, on the third verse? He say, um, "Fuck a school lecture, the lies get yep. me back and all that." You know, yep. it's like you know, like he like he for the average listener that would probably be like, "Whoa!" Like you know, all right now you. You you going too far, you know? It's like f religion and all this other stuff, and you know it's like, but for you to like transition into uh one time for your mind, which is the track right after, it's like, you know, mm-hmm. let me fall back, let me let me fall back from you know, you know where I done took the listener, you know what I'm saying? I done took the listener yeah. to this. Mhm. You know that's why it's a, to me whenever I whenever I hear. Illmatic and I listen to um, Reasonable Doubt, they always mirror each other to me. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> really? I don't see that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in that they're a journey that, the, that this person is taking you on. True. Similar, and you're, similar like, to like you're starting in the beginning you know reasonable doubt you start with his hustle and you end that regret like he's taking you on a ride on a on a ride and a journey in the same way it's like a it's like a like an audible donald goins novel i always say that Mm -hmm. and i feel like illmatic does the same thing like it you know it kind of walks you through something that's extremely heavy and thick and it's deep you know and I feel like I'm taking on the same kind of journey not necessarily you know exactly the same way and with the same you know um, the same narrator and the same you know sentiments but there's parallels there that you can draw but um Go ahead, Aaron. Oh no, I was just thinking about how like I don't really. I think it's I I, I often when people compare reason without the Illmatic, I often think that it's unfair. Like it's a different, you know. I don't want to say a different context because I feel like a lot of those ideas that Jay is putting down it comes from the same the same era that Nas comes from. You know what I'm saying? Like the the same era that Nas coming from on Illmatic. The same era that Jay is coming from with Reasonable Doubt. Yeah. Well, I would say that Illmatic inspired Reasonable Doubt to an extent. See, I would, yeah, I would say that too, because that happens a lot so too. Like, I, you know, yeah. Um, when you hear when when you hear certain things, it's like, yeah, Jay might have had some of these ideas before or ahead of time, but at the same time, when you hear, uh, I think he was getting chased to his building. That's what I think. <laughs> and he ain't even give you his number. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Yo, shout out to Jay. We still, we still love both Nas and Jay, but you know, yeah, they squashed their but, beef with each other, so you ain't never gonna hear them come at each other and and perform either, um, on, and um, you know, or, or any of the songs that uh. Or, you know, I don't think I've ever heard Jay actually do uh, What's the Name anymore either. Oh, no. Nah. No, nah, no. Yeah, he didn't. He doesn't, he, he doesn't do TakeOver anymore, does he? Well, if you were Jay, would you? Well, neither one of them performs that, those songs. I think they put them in the rest. 
I mm. mean, that makes that makes sense overall. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we grown now, whatever. We done moved on. But at the right. same time, I think this is the difference between, like, uh, a diss record like Ether and Takeover and a diss record like um, The Bridge is Over and, you know, um, MC Shans. What's MC Shans? Uh, Kill Trump. That Noise. The Bridge. You know? Oh, The Bridge. No, yeah, the bridge. Oh, was yeah, the it was the bridge, bridge and the bridge was over. Then it was yeah, the yeah. Kill, kill that noise and well, the bridge uh, wasn't really a, wasn't a disc record. KRS took, <laughs> took that song and got offended and made the bridge was over. And yeah, kill that noise. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So like, I think I think is is I think it's a little bit of a difference. Like people, and this is after people got to remember this is after the whole Tupac and Biggie thing. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when, beef became very different. Right. Yeah. So when, yeah. so like even now when I look at it, it's kind of strange to me. Like you know, like you you see like Nas and Jay doing records together. Then you see like you know them shaking hands and pictures. It's weird for me because like that situation got really really personal. I don't see myself. <laughs> I don't see myself personally shaking hands with the man that you know like basically well, like. I think that the when the woman in question sh- turns up on Vlad videos looking like an alleged crackhead, I think it helps. <laughs> yeah, so, I, um, we've all. No, I, I'm just telling y'all, listeners, if you haven't seen Carmen on the Vlad videos, it look uh, you know allegedly, allegedly, she looks like something is just really wrong. I just don't think I'm I'm saying like in general like with hip hop fans I think the whole Jay and Nas you know oh we settled our differences we grown men like yeah that's understandable but like you know doing records with each other you know showing ourselves in pictures like oh yeah we cool and all like that's that's a bit much for me like it's not I don't, you know it's, what it's I don't think the, so. I, go ahead it's almost to the point where it's like, and I don't know how real it is. You know what I'm saying? Like people want. I won't you know, say it's want, not real. I definitely say I, that you probably won't see it again. Not I feel for like a they had time. to do that though. Had to do that though because right before them was Big and Pop. And see, that's how I think too. I think it, our generation yeah, how, is a lot more is a, a lot more attuned to that than yeah, the generation that's what now I, because that's they don't what, understand what we went through with Big and Pop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. That's why. That's why I feel about. That's how I feel about it, though. I feel like they did it out of obligation. It's like we we have to we have to like you know present the aesthetic, even if we don't genuinely feel that way towards each other. You know what I'm saying? I don't know because because Jay said, and I read and I have seen him. I think give interviews where he says that his mother, his mother came at him after she heard super ugly. And she was like, no, no, son. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> like, I mean, your mom come at you and tell you, no, you didn't fucked up now. <laughs> and I think that it, it, I'm sure that, that that did something to him. It was like, no. She was like, you went to a place that, that my son, like, you are my son. What are you doing? Right. But see, people, what people don't understand is like Super Ugly is more so, more, Super Ugly was like more so hood <laughs> level disc record. It was hood level disc record. It wasn't for the more intellectual, intellectual hip hop listener. It wasn't, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't that type of vibe. It was like, it was like, you know, let's, let's, we, let's get in the mud if we really going to take it there now. It was that type of energy. And, well, you know, obviously, so he felt better. Yeah, about he did. Like he was angry, yeah. but. Ah, to Nas's credit, Jay Z took it there. He started it. He, he took it there. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I he tell was people, dry I, dissing them every two seconds and every like, right. like, like is that your bitch? That was a dry diss. Mhm. Like I tell know, people, I tell people all the time though. I tell people all the time that Ether was light. Like if you listen to Ether, Ether is light compared to what Nas really could have done. Yep. And, and and he had a time he had a time span where he could have worked that whole thing out like a lot differently than what he did. True. And like, he uh, could have the blueprint the blueprint yeah. and takeout came t- the blueprint and takeover came out uh September set uh September eleventh. 
Mm-hmm. And um, still mad again. Ether came out around around Jay's birthday strategically. Yeah. Um, this in December. You know what I'm saying? December is a long mm-hmm. time away from December is a long time away from September. He uh he could have done he could have done a lot with that, but he didn't do. Like Ether was light to me. Like when you listen to it, like it's one we of our favorite. He didn't even want to. He didn't even want to do it. Right. Like when you they listen to, to Ether, them. like it starts off with him just like bragging about himself mostly. Yeah. Like he not even digging in on him until like the last verse really. You know what's so weird to me? Just um looping it back to um one time for your mind. I didn't like that chapter though. I didn't understand. I didn't get the connect to what they were talking about. The uh, misogyny. Song. Yeah, like I didn't get the whole misogyny angle. Yeah, okay. I was. I was. Yeah, I think I was telling y'all about that too. Like I remember reading that part, and um, they were talking about how like, um, Nas's flow. Is kind of catering to like you know um um like like schoolgirl nursery rhymes and stuff like that. Mhm. And um, I kind of I got cadence in that song. Right. I kind of I understood that part of it. And um, it's funny because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking like you know like what we talk about all the time how like you know us as men a lot of times we like unconsciously. Uh, uh, sexist towards certain things, and like how a lot of a lot of guys, I think, would like when they listen to Illmatic. I think they always look over a song like you know, one time for your mind, and it's probably it probably roots back to that type of thing. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't get the misogynist comparison either. Yeah, and I figured that's why they did that chapter the way they did it, how they went back to his timeline, like when he was born and what was popular at the time, and at the time, and were being yeah. raised. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because they were talking, they they talk about his birth in 1973, and then go to his rebirth in 1994 when the when Illmatic dropped. Um. Oh man, Errol Errol Hyman died. Really. Yeah, I didn't know that. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, Anthony. Yeah. Tell the people my who bad. Earl Hyman is. Earl Hyman was Heathcliff Huxtable's dad. <laughs> or the Cosby Rest Show. Peace. Rest in peace, Earl Hyman. He that that was my dude. Speaking of jazz, remember on the show he was a jazz um. Enthusiast. Jazz trombonist. Excuse me, he was a jazz trombonist. Uh-huh. He played the trombone on that show. Mm-hmm. 91? Damn. Yep. His name was Russell Huxtable. <laughs> <laughs> and he told a ridiculous fan dance story on one episode. So, anyway. Um. May he rest in peace. Sorry about that. But yeah, I didn't get the misogynist angle either. Like I it didn't I didn't get the I thought it was a bit of a stretch. Mm-hmm. I do see what you're saying, Aaron, though, because you know what that brings me back to, Aaron? What? The whole nineties candy beat era. Mm-hmm. So are y'all are y'all saying like that was that one song he needed for his album in order for it to be critical, not critical, but um, what's the word I'm looking for? Mainstream, I guess. Poppy. Oh, well, that Commercial. song wasn't mainstream or poppy. Yeah, nothing was mainstream or poppy about that one. Nah, I didn't no. think so. I didn't think so, but it wasn't. I didn't feel like first impressions again. I didn't feel like that was up to par with the rest of the album, but it did fit in terms of delivery and whatnot, and yeah. even the production. That's because I feel like I feel like a lot of times we listen to music differently too, Anthony. Because like the era we come up in is like it's songs that's designed that's made to just be fillers. Mm-hmm. Man, yeah, there are. Like one. And well, it is. It definitely is one. But I, but I can be just as entertained by a filler depending on if it's good or not. Like, like okay, let me give you Michael Jackson's Thriller. Thriller that was a happens, filler. That happens to rhyme with. 
Thriller. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ready to say that when you said that. No, Thriller was not a filler. I'm saying even Thriller has fillers. Mm. Like, like what? And what song? And it's kind of easy to kind of pluck them when you really think about it. Like, Baby Be Mine. I love Baby Be Mine, though. That's my shit. See? Exactly. <laughs> See? Go right there. That song has filler all over it, but I love it, too. Really? It, it has filler. filler. I'm going to listen to that shit. Yeah. Again, just to, it does. It really does, Aaron. I'm sorry. It does. Um, like every I, album does. I feel like, and I don't want to say this, I feel like both um, human nature and PYT were supposed to be fillers. They just weren't. Don't say that. Aaron, I'm look, I'm saying they just turned out not to be. Almost nothing I'm on the album is, is now or got to be filler because uh, I mean. the, like the whole album was fucking a beast. But like definitely um, baby, be mine, and it's the song him and Paul McCartney. The, um, the girl is mine. oh yeah, the girl is mine. The girl is mine. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. Uh-huh. I always thought that. I always felt like that was uh more of a. Well, I I felt like that wasn't designed to be a filler, but it is for me personally. Like I don't really, I don't really dig into that song. Really. And everybody loves that damn song. Yeah, that ain't that ain't my shit. But I mean, it's thriller. There are no fillers. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thriller. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess it's the yeah the difference in perception too. Like as the years go on too. So. Mhm. Yeah. Definitely. Now you got me thinking about that. You got me thinking about that Vlad and Lord Jamar conversation about uh, off the wall and thriller. I was just gonna bring up off the wall because off the wall has songs on it that it, it's definitely supposed to be filler. Yes, it's definitely. Songs. See, I can hear. Really- I can. I I can hear songs on off the wall that I could say is yeah probably th- uh, fillers though. Like what? Like um, like girlfriend, which is my shit. Girlfriend Hell is my no. shit. I, I will I jump think, up and slap you. I, I'll take girlfriend. <laughs> I'll take I'll take girlfriend over. I'll take girlfriend over. The girl is mine. Yo, so I feel the way you feel about fill it. Like there are no fillers on off the wall for me. Zero. Like n- even the song that should be like. I feel like like the Stevie Wonder pins um, can't help it. It's supposed to be filler. It's not. It functions just like um, human nature does. Yeah, it's yeah, very, I, feel the, way, I feel the same way about that song. Yeah, like, it, and it's the fucking shit. Like, yeah, that's my shit right here. Nas uses the human nature fucking sample. On it, it ain't hard to tell. It's not a filler. Okay. Of course he does. And uh, what's but that's thriller. Um, that's that's thriller. That's not what you want. No, but I'm saying, and I was just getting ready to say, De La Soul, you um can't can't um sample um can't help it for um Break of Dawn. Yeah, no doubt. So that like literally this the shit that we're like oh this is yeah no. People hear this shit, they, then they're fucking connecting to it. And that that's, it's not a bit of a sample. And I guess what I, what I mean when I say that, it's not, it's not how Pete Rock plucks a five second, you know, 10 second sample off a song to, to bring us, um, the world is yours. Like, right. like, like those are whole backdrops. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm getting the like the whole song, like the gist of the whole song with those samples. I'm not just getting a piece of it. Speaking but of, I mean, speaking of the world, somebody can listen to it is not filler. Somebody's listening to it and saying that shit ain't filler. That's my fucking jam. Right. Yeah. No. And that, it, it's, I mean, it's got to be a hood jam for somebody to hear that. Oh, they use my shit. 
you know, when you when you right, right, down. yeah, right. <laughs> like, oh shit, break a dawn. Oh yeah. But like, you know, but, I I heard it and, and he's like original, you know, just was like, oh shit, they use that, they use that off the wall, John. Mhm. So otherwise, they wouldn't care. Well, I feel like to a certain extent, you're right. But I feel like people don't understand because what we're talking about now, people don't understand what fillers can be. Mm. <laughs> like that can turn into your into your hood shit that blows up in the neighborhood and people be demanding you play it when you tour and can turn into well, your next single. Would you well, say Rewind it? was a filler? Yeah. Really? I would. Yeah, I would. Too. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would. Speak. Even though it's dope as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> But so mean, what's the thin line? So what's the thin line between like fillers and singles? Then <laughs> now I'm trying. Now I'm trying to figure <laughs> out like. I mean, do you think "Can't Help It" was meant to be a single? Really? I mean, you know, see, I'm I'm a little younger, so my perspective is different. So yeah, I think I can't. Really? I, really? I, I think "Can't Help It" was meant to be is because like you know like no. this all. Like, I done known a few rappers that have sampled in the area thing and all, you know what I'm saying? I done heard it, like, more times than once. Of course you have, because, okay, for instance, l- let me take you back to the 80s a bit. Um, or, or fast forward to the 80s a bit. You know how many times I've now heard people sample new edition songs that were definitely meant to be filler? Right, like Bob Wow and Sierra, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. See, but that song sounds you know like a filler to me. No, but see, but the but the reason why, the reason why I girl, I'm leaving you with fire, and it became hood, hood popular. That's the shit right. the black girls wanted to hear. Right. Yeah. So somebody then goes back into like. You could turn that into your B-side. You can turn that into your single. Like it, it but it, but it, it's more organic than than this phase that we're in, where you just create a slew of singles. Mm-hmm. There's nothing authentic about that. But leaving me again sound like a. It sound like a filler. Like when I when I first heard that song, I was like, this sound like a song that only me and a few other people won't like. But I don't get this. I don't get the same energy this, from Can't Help I It. Do. <laughs> well, I do. Uh, well, I absolutely. Well, we're, we're talking new edition here, and it's teeny bopperish, so you gotta kind of drop your expectations there. Um, <laughs> right, right. <no. laughs> what I'm telling you is, in the neighborhood in 1984, when I was in the fifth grade. Yes, I just told you how fucking old I am. Fuck all of y'all. When I was. <laughs> listening to New Edition and I went to their concert, they could not get off the stage without performing Girl, I'm Leaving You Again. Oh, wow. That shit was hood popular. And if you play it right, like, I've seen them a few times in Audition, like, stop their show and, like, Sing songs that you don't hear them them sing a lot anymore. Mm-hmm. And one time they were performing and they stopped their show and they started singing that you like you couldn't hear shit. The screaming just drowned everything out. Oh wow, <laughs> that's how dope as shit. <laughs> but it, but it is. But you won't ever get that kind of. To me, organic love and reaction when you when you're in a singles market, and all right. you do is just make and and that's my case. for you know, one time for your mind, like not saying that that's you know, like it's that level, but 
you won't know what it's gonna be if you don't let like allow that shit to organically shape. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. I, I would imagine it's even harder nowadays with the streaming and everything. Yeah, that's true. Well, people that's don't listen true. the same way either. That's my art. That was my argument in the last episode. Like, you know, people don't like listen we don't listen to music the way we used to like i remember like back in the day like you know you buy a cd you take it home you play it a couple hundred times if you had a cd player you'd be on a train and up wherever your destination was you ride with that john you know and like you just live with that you live with that music for a while and it was the soundtrack to whatever your life was at that point in time Mm mm-hmm that's true does it we okay so i'm so i'm declaring recess today is is this eyeball discussion we are now having <laughs> <laughs> about filler songs <laughs> <laughs> no doubt no doubt b-side shout out to the b-side shout out to the b-side shout out to prince who made b-sides fucking famous <laughs> okay let me tell you something right now erotic city was a created in history it was a b-side never fucking should have been a b-side erotic city is like one of the greatest greatest prince songs ever constructed you know don't know about that though it's still possible to listen to music that way though but people just don't aaron i'm not even listening to you while you diss prince i'm just gonna step away from the mic like i didn't hear that how, how about this prince you said I don't know about that, and I'm I'm not. I even said I said they either. I said they don't know about that. Oh, okay, I was just getting ready to like verbally box you right now. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? And I feel like I don't know what what because technology has, has kind of ruined that. Yep. It kind of has, but it kind of hasn't because it's still like I still listen to music the same way. I do if I put an album on, if I put an album on from Google Music, I play the whole album. But how many times do you play that whole album? Several times. <laughs> like a lot of people, a lot of people don't. A lot of people like that, and this is what I was trying to explain to you like last time when we were talking about like the whole hip hop dead thing. Like a lot of people are just like, oh, that's new. Let me let me listen to that, and they'll play it. Be like, oh yeah, that shit was dope. And oh, somebody else got something new out the same week, the same month. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying, and they and they move on to the next, and they like, oh, all right, you know, that was that was nice right there. I, I'm feeling that or whatever. You know what I'm saying, like, well, yeah. but they Even don't. The a lot of, in the blog. Yeah, like a lot of people don't ride around to that anymore. Like a lot of people don't like. That's equip. that's sad. Yeah. Cause I mean, I bought, I bought, so I was a little bit late with actually purchasing Illmatic. Um, and <laughs> because I had it on tape, like like my boy made me a tape of it first, and I, like that used to be a thing too. Like you know, yep. I didn't have the money. I was in college at the time, and I didn't have the money, so I w- I had a tape that he made, and I was riding around in the like riding around in somebody's car with that, and like you know, in my headphones. Yes, I had a Walkman. Yeah, nineteen ninety four. <laughs> so you know we were like I will, I'll have my tape and I'll be playing it in my Walkman be chilling and then you know later on down the line I picked the CD up but I was bumping that at the same time that I was bumping Balloon Mind State <laughs> and fucking Midnight Marauders so so I feel like that argument that you were proposing right now is fucking ridiculous. I should have been distracted yeah. on all sides by all three of those things. No, not necess- not necessarily. What I'm saying is is more so the appreciation of it. It's like you appreciate it differently when it's like physically, when it's like, you know, you handling that shit physically and you riding around with it. Like I remember like Anthony remember, like, you know, we yeah. like we was like we was like last on the boat as far as like MP3 players and stuff. Like me and Anthony yeah. because we used to walk around with CD players. You remember? So well, I had I had my John I had my John Hub 35 songs and I had like two four albums and a couple of loose songs on it. Right, but we still but we still come from that generation that was like that was heavily involved in CD players too. Yeah. So like if 
if we had if we was bumping something in our CD player, you only holding a certain amount of CDs with you. You know what I'm saying when you walking around and shit, True. like you know. <laughs> so you only so you only riding around with this and that, and it's like damn. So like when you when you talk about like 2002, 2003, 2004 for me, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I know exactly what I would listen to around that time. You know what I'm yeah. saying, like. But if you talk to That's me true. about in, anywhere between 2013, 2014, 15, I'm I like, I can't tell you shit. Exactly, because I had so much to listen to. Like Anthony always like telling us, like, oh, it's so much good stuff to listen to. Yeah, it's so much good stuff to listen to. And how can I truly appreciate it if I'm jumping from one thing to the next? Isn't that, because yeah, I'm not like bumping it. You're not spending enough time with it. Right. I'm not. I'm not appreciating it but the way I, I would usually to, appreciate it. It don't have to be that way though. It don't Why have not? to be that way. It don't have to be that way. In my travels, just this week alone, I've been listening to the same four or five albums all week. But That's but why true. only four? I mean, why only some time with it? it? I understand what you're saying. It doesn't have to be that way. But for the person that feels like, why should I only have to, you know, um um listen to only four or five albums when there's twenty out there? You know what I'm saying? Like you know it's what? twenty. It's you twenty know good what? things. Oh like wow! It. You just made me think of something. That's the reason why people don't like intellectual hip hop. <laughs> I'm gonna memorize this shit real quick, real quickly, and just recite it and be able to spit it back. You can't spend one week with a Nas album and then know all the lyrics. Nah, it don't work like that. It's impossible, right? It's not possible. He's too. He's fucking. He's too complicated. His shit is too dense. His cadences are too sophisticated. Right. And then as the years go, as the years go by, like the context of stuff changes too. Like when he say shit right. like "never put me, in, never put me in your box if your shit eats tapes." Down days, my mother right. listen to that. We understand what he's talking about. <laughs> like, I didn't even catch that line the first time around. You did? Nope, I didn't have no idea what he said. Hip hop and shorty walk. <laughs> <laughs> I no That's idea what they what do. Is they is they is they walk around <laughs> playing their face. <laughs> it, it took me it took me a couple of listens to say, oh, if my shit eats tape, if your shit eats tape, oh, I right. got it. All right. Yeah, All right. you yeah. fucking yeah. busted ass JVC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like what I'm what I'm pointing out is that we don't have the same appreciation like for music because we so it's so available to us. Like I can like I can easily listen. Yeah, I can listen to Rhapsody right now. You know what I'm saying? She, she got a dope album out right now. So does Crit. But if I'm oh well, I don't feel like listening to what's modern right now. Let me go back and listen to some old Michael Jackson. Let me go back and listen to some old Miles Davis. Not Let me go back. That and, either. You know what I'm saying? It's like I can I, I can think it's I can do the same thing we always say about about us re- like and I've said this to y'all and other people before I remember physically going to every place I went to to purchase a mm-hmm. Nas nice CD yeah every right Let me one tell one you. I still have not seen a physical copy of Leela's Wisdom in the store yep it, so it, by that. it keeps you disconnected from the thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a little more, it's not as personal anymore. And that's, that's what I'm saying when I say that it yeah. changes, it but, changes your appreciation for the music. It's different. It's a little bit different. I don't know if you could put all that on technology though, because like even songs that I came across digitally, albums that I came across digitally, like Sketches of Spain. I put that album on. If ever I go back and listen to that album, I listen to the whole album. See, I have that hard copy. Like, I would never have jazz only digitally. I haven't. I didn't even come across that until later down the line, until more recently. Yeah. I but downloaded jazz, it on Google. Google. Jazz is a, is, a, is a different animal. And like Aaron yeah. is talking right now, like, in order for me to connect to many things, I have to, I have to have a tangible, a tangible connection to it. And it's got to be in my hand. I well, uh, that's a... That's what I'm saying. Another, it's another not, thing, like I always listen to music that way. Like I always put an album on and just put the whole album on and not skip nothing. Yeah, I'm generally like and that I too with this. most things, except for French Montana. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never purchased or downloaded a French Montana album. Me either. <laughs> I don't know how that applies. 
But you don't have to. All you gotta do is go to all you gotta do is go to your streaming app and listen to it. You see what I'm saying? Just go to your streaming app and play one French Montana song. I guess that's a good example. When I listen to Vince Staples, I listen to the whole album. You do? How unfortunate. No, I said I did. <laughs> I didn't say I do. I said I did. <laughs> I, like, listen, I listen to the whole tits. thing. Ass fucking tits. <laughs> the last time, look, I played it that first time. It was the one with that fucking goldfish on it. And that was, the, yeah. I don't even know what it's called anymore. Me either. Me either. Um, so before we we move on, let me get to homework for next week. So we, there's no real homework except for um, that you research, you know, your um, grimy hip hop artist, aka freeway underpass rapist rappers. Is this a show? Say, so when we say when we say you like grimy grimy rappers, are we talking about? Are we like you know? going to differentiate for the listener like you know grimy and gangster so but that's why I said you know allegedly freeway underpass rapist rappers they're, <laughs> they're not just gangster okay we're talking grime like like layers of dirt they look like your Tims are old and <laughs> sometimes, I find myself, sometimes I find myself wearing the same shit for days not caring about what niggas that, think of there you go. <laughs> they look like they have not received a bath in some time. You know, Aaron, I'm sorry. I don't even. I'm. 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 I'm contemplating if we need to exclude Wu Tang and ah and um what's the name from from the list? Because Red Man, Wu Tang in my beat. Huh. Yeah, my beat in Wu Tang. Uh, no, Red Man is is one hundred percent in the running. We gonna leave him his ass right where he at. I associate Red Man with Wu Tang. I always but have. He's not, but he's in the death squad, so you shouldn't. <laughs> he's definitely part of death squad. Yeah, yeah. I always put the two together, Red Man and I. I I want to say the Death Squad should be excluded too, then. Nah, cause they they ain't nowhere near as grimy on a grimy grime level as Wu Tang and my beats. Keith do Murray's think pretty grimy. EPMZ, I think Keith Murray is 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 on. He's he's available. EPMD is available. I just think Wu Tang and and my beat epitomize everything. And it's like, and they're like the most famous of that era, when people yeah, think of They they the pig pens of the rap game. Oh, one hundred percent. Straight up. So, um, I think Aaron ducked out for a second. So we can, um, we can definitely, you know, tell you that we're gonna do our top five for next week. This will be interesting. Yeah, yeah it, it definitely will. Um, Schoolboy Q will be nowhere on my list. Me either. We'll see if that's true for everybody. Not for lack of trying, though. though. (laughs) Yo, look, Schoolboy Q fits the bill. He makes me feel uncomfortable. Like I need to cross the street when I see him. (laughs) Clutching your pearls. (laughs) Clutching my pearls like, Officer, oh! (laughs) But, um, yeah, so that's where we're going to be doing for next week. And Does Biggie count? Does Biggie count? I think he's grimy enough to count. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. no. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I Give, me the loot. Give me the loot. is kind of grimy. Yeah, he has kind a grimy, grimy. moment. He has a grimy moment. Uh, Biggie's kind of grimy. A little bit. He's also kind of shiny. I think it's because maybe he's not good looking. Is what is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say that, but it's true. So, um, again, once again, let's plug the show. Please follow us on social media um, and for me, listen to. And school is officially out, ladies and gentlemen. You bring your phone everywhere. Work, school, shh. The movies... 
Now you can bring it to an Xfinity store for an easy way to switch to Xfinity Mobile, a new kind of network designed to save you money. You can get up to five lines of talk and text included with Xfinity Internet at no extra cost, so all you pay for is data. It's never been easier to switch to Xfinity Mobile and keep the phone you love. Click here to see how. Sorry, I gotta take this. Restrictions apply. Limited to select mobile phones. Requires activation of a new line of Xfinity Mobile. Up to five devices per account. New Xfinity Internet customers limited to up to two lines pending activation of Internet service. Okay, kids. We got T-Mobile's unlimited family plan with Netflix included, so... Our, our New, new Year's, Year's resolution, resolution is to not spoil your show since we can watch our own shows on our phones, tablets, or TV. Good. Get four lines for just 40 bucks each per month with auto pay, taxes and fees included, and a Netflix subscription on us so you can watch your favorite movies and shows only with T-Mobile. Video streams at 480p. A small fraction of customers using over 50 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Netflix for two screens included. Terms apply. Price includes sales tax.